now that we've created a list fragment and we've added that list fragment into an activity, we need to enable communication between the two. So we need to be able to pass data from the activity to the fragment when the fragment's created, and we need to be able to pass data back from the fragment when you click on a list item in the fragment. Now we've already done part of what's necessary to set up the communication from the fragment to the activity, because we already created the we created the interface on fragment interaction listener and we've created the on fragment interaction method in the main activity. It's just that the method doesn't do anything yet. Now the method gets a piece of data and that piece of data is going to be the position of the item clicked from within the fragment. So what I can do is I can actually capture that position and display it so you, you can see that something's happened when you click that particular piece of data. So the easiest thing for me to do is to make a toast message to show that data. So I'm just going to make a simple toast and I actually have an added toast to my um, thing yet I just did toast dot make text so I'm going to make a pop-up text message and you attach it to the activity going main activity dot this you set the text you clicked and I'll say the position which is my name and my variable and then finally, I need to say how long I want it to show, and it's going to be toast dot l e n g t h underscore short. I don't need it to show for very long. And that's the I've made my toast, and now I want to show it. So that's just the easiest way to show some data within an app. Now. The other thing I want to do is I want to be able to pass data into the fragment. Normally, I would do that when I created the fragment. I have a constructor that took some data. Unfortunately, the way that fragments have been defined is fragments are always created with a blank, empty constructor. So you can see I have, it's a required empty public constructor. This is what's always called when I create the fragment. So I cannot use an overloaded constructor to pass data into the fragment. So instead, we create a kind of pseudo constructor called a new instance method. The new instance method is a static method because it's not associated with a specific instance of the blank fragment. It's actually used to create the instance of the blank fragment. So it's actually a public static method and it's called and it's going to return a blank fragment. So it's designed to create and return a blank fragment that can be used in another activity. So it's called public static blank fragment and it's going to be called new instance. That's just the default name that you would give this so you could name it anything. So I'm the new instance method is going to take some sort of parameter. Um, so you could pass strings into it, you could pass integers into it, any kind of data that you want to pass to this method. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pass in a string array. I'm just going to name it A for an array. And so in this method, in this new instance method, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new blank fragment. I'm going to name it F for fragment equals new blank fragment. I'm calling the default struct constructor for the, bl the blank fragment. And I'm going to have to return this blank fragment. So this really is doing nothing, um, but it, as a minimum, it's creating a blank fragment and it's returning the blank fragment. Now I want to actually 
pass the data into the blank fragment, and I have to pass the data to the blank fragment into bundle. And a bundle is just a data structure that's used in Android to pass data between different parts of the app. So I'm going to create a new bundle. Think of it as a knapsack B. And, and I'm going to, so I'm going to, it's just going to be a new bundle passing the default constructor. So I've created a new bundle, like a knapsack to put my data in. And then I'm going to set, add some data to that bundle. So I'm going to B dot and uses the put X and I, I'm going to put a string array in this bundle. So it's going to put string array. And that string array is going to be that array that I passed in. So I'm going to put a string array into this bundle. Oh, but I forgot. I have to, when I, it's a, a data structure that uses name value pairs. So I've dumped a string array into the bundle, but I have to name it. So I'm just going to call it my data. So I give it a name and then I, pass in the piece of data. So it's my data A. So I've put some data into my bundle. And then I need to add the bundle to the fragment. So I take my fragment and I'm going to set the arguments for this fragment. And I'm going to set the argument to this bundle. So now I've added some arguments to this fragment. So I've created a fragment, added I created a bundle, put stuff in the bundle, added the bundle to the fragment, and now I'm going to return the fragment. So now I need to go back. Well, actually, before I go back, when I'm in my onCreate method, I, that's where I would go to take the arguments out of my bundle. So I go, first I want to check to make sure that my fragment was created and I have arguments. So I go, if, if, get arguments. And I don't have to do anything dot get arguments because it's really this dot get arguments for this fragment. But I don't really need the keyword this because I'm in now the fragment. It's been created. And so it says get the arguments. And if I'm going to check to make sure there's not equal to null. So if I've got arguments, then I'm going to want to do something with those arguments. So if I've got arguments, then I'm going to get those arguments, get arguments. And once I get those arguments, I'm going to want to get the piece of data out of the argument. So instead of put, now I'm going to use get. Get string array. And I have to tell it which string array I want to get. And I want to get the string array named my data. Now, if I do this, it gets the data, but it does nothing with it. I actually want to assign it to a variable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go items equals. And so I'm going to say, if somebody passes in a string array, I'm going to overwrite the default array that this fragment uses. Otherwise, I'm just going to use the default array. So this allows me to pass in my own custom data from my activity into my fragment. So in order to use this new instance method, I have to go back to my main activity and I have to use the new instance method. So instead of creating my blank fragment right here using the default constructor, I'm going to want to use my new instance method. So I'm going to create this string array because I'm passing data. Just name it B. I'm creating a string array B. And I'm going to just have some data in it. And so this data is going to be uh, stuff one, stuff two, stuff three. 
So I've got just three pieces of data. It looks a little different than the original data in my fragment. And instead of creating my blank fragment using the default constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my blank fragment using the new instance method. So I'll go blank fragment dot new instance. And new instance is designed to take a string array, which I named B. So I'm going to pass this string array B in, and it should then be added to the bundle and passed to the fragment, and I should now use that string array. So let's see if I did this successfully and I'm able to pass data into my fragment and get the position clicked out. So I'm going to run my app. So my app is launching, and I can see now that it actually worked. I've got stuff one, stuff two, stuff three. So I have different data in my app because I passed the data in. And when I click on stuff two, something should happen. Let's make sure, well, it doesn't seem to be happening. And I get, oh wait, I know what's wrong. Toast messages show up at the bottom of the screen and I can't see the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna click stuff three and see if I get a message. There we go, you clicked two. And so it says you clicked and it's position two because the just like arrays, the lists are indexed starting at zero. So stuff one would be index zero, stuff two, would be index one and stuff three would be index three.